Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young, and you can see my um, information at drscottyoung.com. You can also see Nasara and the Mark of the Beast. It, it is a book that is really hitting, um, hitting its stride, and it gives you a lot of the same information. But we're going to do these. This is number two of the series. We're going to give a lot of information about Nasara. But it's the reason why 2020 actually occurred. Now, we've talked a little bit about the Federal Reserve, and I want to go a little bit further into the Federal Reserve. You see, they're 27 trillion-ish, maybe almost 30 trillion by the time you might be watching this. That means $213,000 per taxpayer that they're responsible for. And you're like, wait a second, how am I responsible for all this debt over you know, literally more than a hundred years. The tax revenue is $3.3 trillion. Now I'm doing this in back in July when you kind of look at this. Um, now it's in February here, but that's, that's what some of the numbers were. Now the interest is $3.8 trillion. Wait a second. If you're $3.3 trillion coming in, but the interest payment is $3.8 trillion, you're not even paying the interest payment. That's why we're way under, we're, we're not just swimming in the top here, okay? We've been underneath for such a long time, and they've been kicking the can down the road. And, the, and, and people say, well, we've got to finally pay that debt. And the answer is no. You do not have to pay the debt. You see, the Great Reset, proffered up by the Kabbalists, the globalists, want to say, yes, you do have to pay it, but we're going to switch it around and we're going to kind of make it where we're going to give you some of the money back, but we're going to really lock our, our fangs into you and get in there deep. And it would be a communist nation and a whole bunch of other cruddy things that I really don't want to spend a bunch of time on. We can a little bit. I have on other, other uh, videos, <clears throat> but we're going to focus more on the Nasara part. Because what Donald Trump and several other people found is a law called Nasara. Now, it was actually signed in by Bill Clinton. Did you know that he signed it in at gunpoint in 2000, right before the end of his two terms, the military said, you will sign this. And what Nassara is, is the National Economic uh, Recovery Act, sorry, uh, Standards and Recovery Act, excuse me, National uh, Economic Standards and Recovery Act. So basically what that was, is it found a way in the 14th Amendment under the fourth section that said, if you don't know everything that's in a contract, this is the framers of the Constitution that put this together. <clears throat> well, excuse me, more of, more of other people that figured this, this situation out. But what it said is that if you don't know every piece of that contract, the contract is null and void, and the person that created the contract has to pay for it. So if I am... The, um, the debtor, the person that the debt is on, let's say it's a $200,000 mortgage or whatever, <coughs> excuse me, whatever that might be. And you are the mortgage company and you create a loan and, and a signatures and all these different things that I don't even fully understand. And it's proven in a court of law. And by the way, it has been, but no one wants to talk about this. What happens is that you, as the mortgage person, eat that loan, but I get the house, okay? Or I get the asset, whatever that might be. <clears throat> and that is the cool thing. Sorry, I'm coughing a little bit. You might say, get a cough drop. I wish I could. I'm trying to get better on that kind of circumstance, but it is what it is. Okay. Now, that is the basics of Nasara. Now, we will expand upon it <laughs> as we go along. <clears throat> okay. First off, you need to know a little bit more about what is, <coughs> excuse me, what are the debts that are outstanding? First off, 
there is around $20 trillion of personal debt. Now that is mortgages and um, uh, car payments and student loans and you know in, uh, interest payments for or all these different things. Uh, uh, credit cards, all these different things. And these are just personal to bank kinds of loan points. Now there are, well, I'll pull, pull back the, uh, the, the student loans because there's about $1.6 trillion of student uh, loans. Now there's $879 billion of credit card debt. It's just, it's fascinating when you kind of realize this. There is $6.8 trillion of foreign debts out there. You mean other countries owe us, yes, $6.8 trillion. The reality is that our money, once, once the money goes from the IRS to the Federal Reserve, I mean, uh, through Treasury to the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve takes their 6% off of it. These central bankers take 6% no matter what happens. Okay, about $600 billion comes in every single year. They take their 6%, boop, they get their money, and they filter it right back into you and give you the paper money or the digital money back in that situation. You go, wait, that sounds like money laundering. It is. It's a, it's a federal money laundering scheme. <coughs> Excuse me. There are other kinds of things too. We have $132 trillion of national assets. There are $153 trillion of unfunded liabilities. I mean, guys, you, when you realize there are $80 trillion of debt, when you count the Federal Reserve, the personal debts, the business debts, now that <coughs> is business to bank, business to business, <coughs> excuse me. There are all these different debt points that are out there. And as you see those points of debt, what Donald Trump is trying to help you understand is that through Nasara, we don't owe any of it. And we're going to show you the brilliance of the Nasara plan. So thanks for listening. Leave some comments. We'll talk much more about this. Thank you so much.